Hi, I'm Jenna. Before I continue, please like and subscribe to hear more about my journey. Now, let me take you back to where it all started. It was a sunny Thursday afternoon when I noticed the empty space in our garage where my son Alex's bike used to be. I asked Alex about it, his face crumbling into tears. Aunt Carol took it for Cousin Mike, he sobbed. I felt a surge of anger. How could she just take it? I decided to confront Carol. I called her, trying to keep my voice calm. Carol, why did you take Alex's bike? Oh, Jenna, Mike really wanted it. You know how it is, and Alex has so many toys, she said nonchalantly. It's not about the toys, Carol. It's about asking. That bike was special to Alex. She laughed it off. Relax. It's just a bike. He'll get over it. Fuming, I hung up and turned to my husband, Mark, who was sitting on the couch, scrolling through his phone. Did you know Carol took Alex's bike? I asked. He didn't even look up. Yeah, she mentioned it. It's fine, Jenna. Fine? How can you say that? It's not hers to take. Mark stood up abruptly, his face red. Why do you always have to make a big deal out of everything? I was taken aback. I'm standing up for our son. He stepped closer, his voice rising. You're just causing drama. That's what you do best. I shook my head in disbelief. Mark, you're supposed to be his father. You should care. He scoffed. Oh, please. He needs to learn to share. You're coddling him. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. This isn't about sharing. It's about respect and boundaries. The argument escalated quickly. Mark's words turned harsher. And before I knew it, he had raised his hand to me. I stepped back in shock, my cheek stinging from the slap. Alex, who had come downstairs, witnessed it all. I saw the fear and confusion in his eyes. That night, after Mark had stormed out to cool off, I sat with Alex, holding him close. Mommy, are you okay? He asked, his small voice trembling. I hugged him tighter. I'm okay, baby. I'm so sorry you had to see that. He buried his face in my shoulder. Why was Dad so mad? I sighed, struggling to find the words. Sometimes people get angry and they don't know how to handle it. But it's never okay to hurt someone especially someone you love. The next morning, I made a decision. I couldn't let this be our life. I couldn't let Alex grow up thinking this was normal. I called a divorce lawyer and started the process. It wasn't easy. My family, my friends, they all had their opinions. You're breaking up the family, my mother said. He's a good provider, Jenna, my friend Lisa added. But I stood my ground. I have to think about Alex and myself. The divorce was messy. Mark fought me on everything, from custody to finances. But I was determined. I got a job, a small apartment. It was tough, balancing work and being a single mom. But every time I looked at Alex, I knew it was worth it. I faced judgment and whispers. Poor Jenna. Couldn't keep her husband happy, they said. But I ignored them. I had to be strong, for Alex and for myself. Life after the divorce was like navigating through a storm. The small apartment we moved into felt alien, its walls echoing with the uncertainty of our new life. I juggled between jobs, trying to keep afloat financially. Alex, who was eight now, could sense the tension. One evening, after a long day of work, I found Alex sitting at the kitchen table, his homework spread out. Mom, can I get a new bike? He asked, not looking up from his paper. I sighed, sitting beside him. Not right now, honey. Things are a bit tight. He nodded, a look of understanding beyond his years crossing his face. It's okay, Mom. I can wait. The guilt weighed heavily on me. I wanted to give him everything he lost and more. But all I could offer was my time and love. My phone rang, shattering the quiet of the room. It was my ex-husband's sister, Carol. Jenna, you're being selfish, keeping the kids away from Mark. I clenched my jaw. They're safer and happier here, Carol. She scoffed. You always were dramatic. You're ruining their lives. The call ended with a bitter taste in my mouth. I looked at Alex, who had overheard the conversation. Some people don't understand, and that's okay. We know the truth, right? He nodded, a small smile on his face. Despite the backlash, I found small victories in our daily life. I enrolled Alex in a local community center where he made friends. His laughter slowly returned, filling our home with a warmth that had been missing. Months turned into years, and we settled into our new normal. Alex grew more confident, and I found a better job. 
Our conversations were no longer about what we lost, but about our dreams and plans. One day, coming home from work, I found Alex in the living room, his school project laid out. Mom, I want to do my project on strong women. Can I talk about you? Tears welled up in my eyes. Of course, honey. But why me? He looked up, his eyes sincere. Because you're the strongest person I know. You fought for us, for a better life. That's what true strength is. In that moment, I realized the impact of our journey. I wasn't just rebuilding a life. I was setting an example for Alex, showing him resilience, hope, and the courage to face adversity. Our journey wasn't easy, but it was ours. We built a new world from the ashes of the old, a world where we were free to laugh, dream, and grow. A world where we were no longer victims of our past, but architects of our future. The years had flown by, and with them, my life had transformed. Alex was now in high school, a smart, compassionate teenager. I had worked my way up in my job, finding stability and even a sense of pride in our small, cozy apartment. One late autumn day, a knock on the door jolted us from our evening routine. I opened the door to find Mark, my ex-husband, standing there, a shadow of his former self. His eyes held a certain desperation I hadn't seen before. Jenna, I need to talk to you. It's important. I hesitated, but something in his voice made me relent. We sat in the living room, the air thick with unsaid words. I'm sorry, Jenna. For everything, he started. I've been through a lot. Lost my job, my house. It made me realize what I had and lost. I listened, my emotions a tangled mess. Part of me wanted to find some solace in his misery, but all I felt was indifference. Mark, people go through tough times, but that doesn't erase the past. He looked down, nodding slowly. I know, I was hoping... Maybe we could start over, as a family. I let out a dry laugh. Start over? After what you did? He reached out, but I pulled back. I've changed, Jenna. I really have. Change doesn't undo years of pain, Mark. It doesn't erase the fear in Alex's eyes every time he heard your voice. He was silent, the weight of my words hanging heavy between us. You walked out of our lives. We struggled. We cried. But we also grew. We don't need you anymore, Mark. He stood up his eyes pleading. I'm alone, Jenna. I have nothing. And whose fault is that? You chose your path, Mark. Now live with it. As he left, the door closing softly behind him, I felt a chapter of my life close. I had moved on, grown stronger, and in his weakness, I found my final piece of closure. Alex came down, having heard parts of our conversation. Mom, are you okay? I smiled, hugging him tightly. Better than okay. We are going to be just fine. That night, as I lay in bed, I thought about the years that had passed. The struggles had shaped us, made us who we were. Mark's return was a stark reminder of how far we had come. I had once been a woman shattered by betrayal and pain. But now, I was a fortress, unyielding and strong. My journey wasn't defined by the man who broke me, but by the strength I found in rebuilding myself. Life had thrown its worst at us and we had emerged not just surviving, but thriving. And as the first light of dawn crept through the curtains, I knew we were ready for whatever came next. Life had a way of coming full circle. As Alex and I thrived, Mark's life seemed to spiral further out of control. His misfortunes were a stark contrast to our peace and stability. One evening, as Alex and I were having dinner, my phone buzzed with a text from Lisa, an old friend who still kept in touch with Mark. Did you hear about Mark? DUI last night. Lost his license. I read the message aloud, and Alex looked up, his expression unreadable. Do you feel bad for him, Mom? I thought for a moment. Part of me does, but he's made his choices, Alex. Yeah, I guess everyone has to face their own music, he said, going back to his meal. A few weeks later, another piece of news came our way. Carol called me, her voice frantic. Jenna, it's Mark. He's been in an accident. It's bad. Despite everything, a pang of concern shot through me. Is he okay? He'll live. But he's lost his job. His health is a mess. Jenna, he has nothing. I hung up the phone, a myriad of emotions swirling within me. It was hard not to see the irony in it all. At work the next day, my colleague Sandra noticed my distracted state. Everything okay, Jenna? I nodded, forcing a smile. Just thinking about how life turns out for people. She gave me a knowing look. Karma's a real thing, huh? 
I laughed, the sound more bitter than I intended. Seems like it. That night, I lay in bed, thinking about Mark. Our paths had diverged so drastically. Where he had fallen, we had risen. It wasn't joy I felt at his downfall, but a sense of vindication. My decision to leave him, to protect Alex and myself, had been the right one. The following week, I received a letter from Mark. His words were a mix of apology, regret, and a plea for help. I've lost everything, Jenna. I'm alone. I need you. I held the letter for a long time, the paper shaking slightly in my hands. Then, with a deep breath, I tore it into pieces. Mom, was that from Dad? Alex asked, entering the room. I nodded. He's asking for help. And what are you going to do? I looked at my son, seeing the strength and maturity he had gained over the years. Nothing, Alex. We've done all we can. It's time for him to take responsibility for his life. Alex hugged me, his embrace full of understanding and support. As I watched Mark's world crumble from a distance, I realized that our own world had never been more solid. We had each other, our strength, and a future full of promise. The path we chose wasn't easy, but it was ours, and it had led us to a place of peace and resilience. Mark's fate was his own making, a series of choices that led him to where he was. And as for us, we were proof that sometimes, the hardest decisions lead to the brightest destinations. The years continued to roll by, and with them came the sweet taste of triumph and peace. Our little apartment, once a symbol of our struggle, had become a home filled with laughter and memories. One evening, as Alex and I were sitting on our small balcony enjoying the cool breeze, he turned to me with a thoughtful look. Mom, do you ever regret it? Leaving Dad, starting all over? I smiled, taking in the stars above us. Not for a second, Alex. It was the hardest decision of my life, but it led us here. He nodded, a smile playing on his lips. I'm proud of you, Mom. You showed me what real strength is. Our conversation was interrupted by a phone call. It was my boss, Mr. Thompson. Jenna, I have great news. The board loved your project proposal. They want to implement it company-wide. I was ecstatic. That's amazing, Mr. Thompson. Thank you for believing in me. After hanging up, I shared the news with Alex. His excitement matched mine. You're going to be famous at work now, Mom. The following weeks were a whirlwind of activity. My project took off, bringing recognition and a sense of accomplishment I had never felt before. At work one day, Sandra came up to me, a big grin on her face. You're the talk of the company, Jenna. How does it feel to be a superstar? I laughed, the joy bubbling inside me. It feels like I'm finally where I'm supposed to be, Sandra. The success at work was sweet, but the true triumph was in the life Alex and I had built. He was preparing for college, a bright future ahead of him. The values of strength, resilience, and kindness I had tried to instill in him were now a part of who he was. One quiet evening, I sat down to write in my journal, a habit I had developed over the years. It was a way to reflect on our journey, to see how far we had come. From the ashes of a broken marriage, we rose. We faced challenges and judgments, but we never gave up. Our journey was not just about surviving. It was about thriving. We didn't just endure, we grew. And in the end, we found happiness, not in spite of our past, but because of it. Closing the journal, I looked around our home, a sense of peace washing over me. We had come full circle, from the depths of despair to the heights of happiness. Our story wasn't just one of survival. It was a testament to the power of resilience and the unbreakable bond between a mother and her child. As I turned off the lights, ready to call it a night, I realized that our story was one of hope, a reminder that no matter how dark the night, the dawn always comes. And when it does, it brings with it the promise of a new beginning, a new chapter waiting to be written. And that's the end of our story. Before you go, I have a question that I'd really like to hear your thoughts on. If you were in Jenna's shoes, would you have given Mark another chance for the sake of past memories and family? Or would you stand by your decision as she did? This is a deep and complex decision many face. Share your views in the comments, and let's discuss. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more thought-provoking stories like this one. Your support means everything. Thanks for watching. The following